Should you buy a used Hyundai Ionic in July 2023? First of all, let's address the elephant in the room, that advert. If you think you know our cars and how to say our name, maybe it's time to think again. Hyundai, not Highland I. Oh, it's Hyundai, by the way. Hyundai. Search Hyundai. It's the dawn of a new Hyundai. Now, if you ask me, it's a little bit off to tell your customer base that they're all stupid because they've been mispronouncing your name. However, I think it's even worse if in your previous advertising you did this. I said hi. And I said hi. I said hi. And I said hi. We all said hi to Hyundai. Confirming that the very thing you've been taking the piss out of is actually how you used to present yourself. Not cool, is it? But I thought we'd get that out of the way before we get started. Let's get to it. The Hyundai Ionic launched in 2016, offering hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and fully electric drivetrains. We'll focus on the fully electric model here, of course, because that's kind of what we do on this channel, but the others are very popular too. There's taxi drivers all over the land absolutely swear by the hybrid models, Whilst I've not got much experience of the plug-in hybrids, I'm sure they're well regarded too. You'll know the Ionic name now as Hyundai's sort of sub-brand they give to their electric cars. We now have the Ionic 5 and Ionic 6 models that make a big deal of that and, and try to actually properly use that as a sub-brand, but this car is the car that started it all. Efficiency is the name of the game with the Ionic. The design, which isn't to everybody's taste, but I think is softening as time goes on, leads to unrivaled aerodynamic efficiency. Some owners even report that in the summer they'll see an excess of 7 miles per kilowatt hour from their Ionic, which is outstanding, but achieving 4 miles per kilowatt hour is, is perfectly reasonable and expectable most of the time, which I think you'll agree is very impressive. If you're looking for an all-electric Ionic, your main choice will really be the battery size. It launched with a 28 kilowatt hour battery and later models had a 38 kilowatt hour battery. Though some would question whether that was actually an upgrade at all. And we'll get to that in a moment. 115 mile real world range for the 28 according to EV database and 155 miles for the 38. Although many, many owners, like I say, report that they'll exceed that range very regularly. Those of you that own one, your reports of real world range would be very useful. So get yourself in the comments and let me know what kind of range you see from your Ionic, making sure you make it clear whether it's a 28 or a 38, because I think that'd be really helpful for prospective buyers to get the real world experience of real owners. I know there are a number of you that are subscribed and regularly watch these videos that have an Ionic because you tell me about it a lot. And therefore I think your experiences would be very useful to anybody that is considering one. 0 to 60 in just under 9.5 seconds and a power output of around 120 horsepower. So it's not going to set up the world on fire. It's not an out and out powerhouse, but let's be honest, the majority are going to find that available performance very sufficient for their needs. And let's be honest, it is meant to be a sensible car for doing sensible things rather than something to set the world on fire. So I would say from a performance point of view, that is more than adequate. Now, I think one of the notable features with the Ionic is that it's just a fairly normal car. And you might think it's strange for me to think that that's notable, but if you look at some of the other EVs on the market, especially ones around the time where the Ionic was, was sort of new and, and interesting and up and coming, you have things like the BMW i3, right? We talked about this in the last video. It looks like a spaceship, it feels like a spaceship, and really is for those that are all about, oh, I'm an early EV adopter and I want something a bit different. Well, the Ionic, I think, dials that back quite a bit. The interior is about as inoffensive as you're going to find. It has plenty of physical buttons and switches and it, it doesn't need to give you that whole, oh, this is a car of the future. It just gets on with it. And I think that's really good. And I think there's a lot of people out there that really appreciate that. The exterior styling is not for everyone, but on the whole, it's fairly inoffensive. And I think as time goes on, it actually looks more and more normal and, and mundane even in this sort of sea of huge SUVs and stuff that we're faced with. I think the Ionic actually gives it a little bit of normality, a little bit of sanity. 
and therefore I think for people that don't necessarily want to stand out and scream to the world oh I'm driving an EV it's not a bad choice one point to note is that the 28 kilowatt hour model charges faster than the bigger battery version and that is one of the main reasons why you need to consider which one is best for your needs. In theory you can actually go point to point faster in the 28 kilowatt hour battery version including the time it takes to charge because although you need to stop more often it charges faster when you do. So you really do need to bear that in mind if you regularly want to make long journeys. Now obviously if your intention is that you will travel within the range that's available to you, you might decide the bigger battery version is what you need because you regularly make trips that are still within that range but beyond the range of the 28, in which case it's a no brainer for you. But if you actually regularly want to go even further than that, where you need multiple charging stops, you might actually find it's not quite as clear cut as you think. So do bear that in mind if you are looking. Off to Auto Trader we go then, and obviously the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find the cheapest, roughest, highest mileage, biggest liability one that I can. And I was quite surprised, quite surprised to find the cheapest available actually looks really tidy. 9995 gets you into this 83,000 mile example on a 66 reg, so one of the earliest ones around, and it certainly looks tidy enough. Four previous owners might put you off a little bit, I mean it's been around a bit. Given it is nearly seven years old now, maybe that's not too bad. It's still a little bit on the high side, but I don't tend to get too caught up in things like previous owners. I mean, cars can go through a number of previous owners quite quickly if they're ex-demo for a bit, and then they maybe go to someone who doesn't keep the car for very long. You know, and you can rack up the owners quite quickly in those first few years. I'm not sure I'm worried. Overall condition is key at the end of the day. And I'm almost disappointed with this one. I was expecting the cheapest Ionic 28 in the country to be far, far rougher than this and a bit cheaper. I thought maybe that, you know, like when I found that i3 in the last video for sort of 6995, but it was a bit rough, it was a bit high mileage. I thought we were going to have the same with the Ionic 28, but actually, this one, 10 grand, bottom of the market, certainly doesn't look it, looks very tidy. I don't think you can go far wrong. Now, if you want to be a bit more sensible about the things and buying the bottom of the market isn't quite for you, 12, 12 and a half grand seems to be the sweet spot for the 28 kilowatt hour model. There are plenty around at that kind of price with sub 50,000 miles. Uh, I think a fairly sensible place to be if you're buying a second hand car and certainly it looks like you're getting quite a lot for your money. The odd premium SE trim comes up for this kind of money as well, maybe with a little bit higher mileage, but that will be the top of the range trim level, full leather interior, all that stuff, if spec is what really matters to you you might need to creep up a little bit on mileage if you've got a strict budget. I think this represents a really decent amount of car for the money. Although I do wonder if you'd actually have a hard time choosing it over a 40 kilowatt hour Leaf, which you can find at this kind of money as well. And that's gonna be a question only you can answer. Or of course, some of those BMW i3s we looked at last time, also this kind of price point. But the Ionic 28 certainly looks like a good option. Now, should a 38 kilowatt hour car, the bigger battery version, be the object of your desires, you're going to have to up your budget very slightly. Just over £13,500 seems to be the entry point at the moment, like this one, offered by Car Giant, with just over 50,000 miles on the clock. This 13999 model at motor point is barely run in, with just, oh, just over 16,500 miles on the clock. That has to be the pick of the bunch for me, really. If you want the bigger battery car without breaking the bank, you know, if you're, if you're sort of floating around the lower end of the sort of budget for the, the big battery car, you can't really go wrong with this one. Obviously, on the face of it, just looking at the adverts, this one looks like a pretty good buy. Very low mileage, very clean and tidy. Now, if spec is the be all and end all, and you absolutely must have that premium SE spec, you're going to have to just up the budget very slightly. And this premium SE at the car supermarket in Birmingham will more than likely catch your eye, but it will be £15,000 if that's the vehicle for you. Overall though, I think the Ionic represents fantastic value for money in the current market. Every single one of these cars we featured here was significantly more expensive not so long ago. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say a bad word about them. They're dependable, they're very efficient, and it's just a car that gets on with it, it's an electric car, yes, but it doesn't make a big deal about it, it doesn't make a big song and dance about it, it just gets on with the job. Let me know in the comments, 
if you're a happy Ionic owner that absolutely loves it, or indeed, if you've got some ownership information to share that might help people who are looking to make up their mind. Have, have you had some bad experiences? Is there something we need to know about the Ionic that we might need to consider before buying one? Or indeed, if you'd be tempted by any of these models we featured today, and if you think they represent as good value for money as I do, and you're gonna snap one up, let us know. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the next one of these videos where I'll pick another model to bring you an overview of what the used market looks like today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.